Hey guys, it's been a while, so I wanted to give an update on the latest progress on my F35 project. But first off, I wanted to give a shout out to Pratt & Whitney for sending me this rather nice polo shirt. Pratt & Whitney's military engine group is responsible for the F135 engine that powers the F35. They saw a few of my videos and thought they'd send this along. Uh, so that was a pretty nice gesture. I hope they're enjoying seeing the progress so far, and I appreciate being noticed. Anyways, uh, you guys can see that I've prepared my flight test airframe. Um, this took a little bit longer than it should have, but mostly because I wanted to document some things and also take the opportunity to work some improvements into the design uh, while it was disassembled. Most of those improvements are in the new 3DSM. Uh, you may remember that the previous one wasn't damaged in the crash, but uh, I, I had some changes in mind and I wanted to get those worked in. Uh, so this one's brand new. Uh, the first change that you can see are the ring gears now have teeth only along the range that they needed instead of the full perimeter. This saves a little bit of weight, saves some print time, and overall just kind of reduces unnecessary waste. You'll also notice that the ring gears have some integrated stops that interface with the pinion gears on the motors on either extreme of the rotation. Uh, these are for an automatic calibration routine that I'm working on that will learn the precise encoder values for each end of the range of motion so that we can get really accurate controls of the angles. Uh, next, and probably the most important change, are the new motor mounts for the gear motors. These are a lot more substantial than the old ones, and they have a mechanical strain relief where the wiring harness is anchored to the motor mount. This, combined with the new encoders that have a connector instead of wire pads, should make the whole system more robust and reduce the chance of a repeat of the issue previously, which was caused when some of the wires came off those wire pads due to strain in flight. These are new gear motors as well. Uh, they're exactly the same form factor as previously, but they output a little bit more torque in about one and a half times the speed as the original motors. Uh, this doesn't really have too big of an effect on performance, but what it does let me do is have faster yaw response so that I can tune the yaw attitude controller a little bit tighter uh, for better yaw control in hover mode. Next, you'll see that I've moved to a new 3BSM controller module. Uh, this has a Teensy 3.2 microcontroller instead of the old Teensy 3.0, or sorry, 2.0. The uh, biggest reason for that is so that I can have more interrupt-capable pins, and that means that I can measure inputs from the PWM transition and rudder commands and from the encoders more accurately. Uh, also, it should let me control the PWM output rate to the motor controllers, and this addresses kind of a, a, a non-important issue, but if you've seen previous videos, you'll notice that the Motors emit a high-pitched whining noise pretty much all the time, even when the duct isn't moving. And that's because of the PWM frequency that the motors are being driven by from the motor drivers. Uh, I think by controlling that frequency, I can move it up out of the audible range so that it just won't make that annoying whining noise. Um, yeah, and, and lastly, I through that whole process, building the 3BSM and building the new controller board and doing all of the wiring, uh, I documented everything. I've got really thorough step-by-step -step videos for that process. Um, they're going to be stuck in, in editing for a while, but uh, excited to be able to share those so that people can get a better idea um, for how this technology all works, how it interfaces with each other, and just how I printed and assembled it. Uh, so yeah, aside from that, um, everything's back together. I'm going to get started with flights as soon as possible, um, so keep an eye out. Uh, I really think that I'm at the point where we're going to start seeing really robust, reliable performance, get some nice transitions in there, uh, spend some more time on tuning, and pretty rapidly approach the phase where we're going to be able to take this design and call it good enough to start building a nice, detailed, expensive F-35B airframe. So stay tuned for some flight videos, and I'll see you guys next time.